नमस्ते वेलकम बैक टू अवर चैनल क्यूबिड एजुकेशनल सर्विसेस माय नेम इज प्राणेश वी आर सॉल्विंग द एस आर एप्टीट्यूड टेस्ट ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी फिजिक्स एम सी क्यूज एंड इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू सॉल्व द फोर्थ क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम दैट सीरीज लेट एस रीड द प्रॉब्लम फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन नंबर फोर कंसिडर एन इनफाइनाइट वन डायमेंशनल वायर कैरिंग अ यूनिफॉर्म करंट आई एज शोन इन द फिगर सो दर इज दिस वायर and it is carrying a current i in this direction a square loop of side a is initially placed such that the center of the loop okay center of the loop is at a distance r from the wire distance r from the wire <coughs> where r is greater than <coughs> excuse me r is greater than e by 2 that is obvious okay so this is a by 2 if the total uh, edge length is a this is a by 2 and when they say r greater than a by 2 what they mean is the side of the loop which is closest to the current carrying conductor is not touching the current carrying conductor so there is some gap here okay there is some non zero gap here okay next the square loop is then moved rightwards with a uniform speed v as shown in the figure so this is the uniform speed v okay so this loop is basically going away from the current carrying wire what is the induced emf in the loop as a function of time t so we would like to calculate the emf induced in the loop as a function of time t that is what we want and we have four options with us correct and then all four of them we have uh, r plus vt bracket square so i can clearly see that all the options involve emf as a function of now let us first try to argue qualitatively uh why will there ever be an emf uh, induced emf in the loop first of all we have to understand that any current carrying loop, uh, wire okay any current carrying wire is going to have its own magnetic field correct it is going to have its own magnetic field and what is the formula we can easily calculate the magnetic fields magnitude at any point okay we, we can also calculate the direction by using the right hand screw rule okay so if i have a point here okay then the direction of the magnetic field at this point will be away from us towards the screen okay so it will be something like this and the direction of magnetic field here will be towards us be shown by a dot okay you can take the fingers of your right hand curl the fingers point the thumb in the direction of the current and the uh, curled fingers will point the direction of the magnetic field so here the magnetic field lines will be circular you know that already second thing can we can we estimate the magnitude or can we determine the magnitude of the magnetic field here let us say this is at a distance of x okay from the current carrying wire yes okay so the magnetic fields magnitude here will be mu not i upon 2 pi x okay we are going to use this particular formula to solve the problem <coughs> now uh because you can see that there is a loop so there is a closed circuit okay loop refers to a closed circuit okay loop refers to a closed circuit okay and as this loop moves away from the wire the magnetic field lines okay or the strength of the magnetic field okay as this loop moves away from the current carrying conductor decreases okay now if magnitude of the magnetic flux decreases the magnitude of the magnetic field decreases magnitude of the magnetic flux will also decrease and according to lenz's law if magnetic flux associated or through any closed current uh, closed loop conducting loop if it changes with time there will be emf induced in it okay and that emf will be given by negative of the derivative of magnetic flux with respect to time okay this is by lenz's law so we have now qualitatively understood 
why there will ever be an emf in the current carrying uh, sorry in the in the loop okay so if you divide this uh, emf e induced emf by the resistance of the loop or uh, wire loop then we will get the current flowing through that okay fine so now we need to estimate the induced emf and to do that we are going to take the help of following for number 3 okay so this induced emf e between ends of a conductor okay moving with speed v okay moving with speed v normal to field lines is e equal to blv correct where l is the length of the conductor l is the length of the conductor so we are now going to start with the same formula now e equal to blv and we wish to now get b from this particular formula correct okay so uh, let me redraw this figure let me redraw this figure here now let us name the vertices of the loop let us call them a b c d let us first calculate the potential difference or the emf induced between ends a and d v a d equal to okay so uh, first of all let us leave b here let us calculate l and v l is a and v is okay anyways the usual notation v now what about b magnetic field okay so it will be mu not i upon 2 pi into x where x is the distance of the point from the current carrying conductor which will, which is creating the magnetic field now observe that initially the distance was r okay they are saying initially placed uh, okay at a distance r what the center of the loop the center of the loop is initially at r now if time t has elapsed after the movement began then by how much amount will ad would have moved r plus vt from the wire okay sorry so r plus vt is actually the center r plus vt is actually the center okay because the central distance is actually r okay so r plus vt is the location of the center of the loop from the current carrying conductor and we need to subtract a by 2 from this because ad is closer to the current carrying conductor than the center by an amount a by 2 so this is v ad now what about v bc can we calculate v bc yes same formula blv <coughs> l is same v is same but is the magnetic field same no magnetic field here will be weaker because it is farther away from uh, the current carrying conductor than ad so mu not i same formula mu not i upon 2 pi x so let us first consider the movement of the center of the loop again so that will be r plus vt and now note that bc is a by 2 units to the right of the center of the loop so we have to add a by 2 to this okay we have to add a by 2 to this now to calculate the net emf okay net induced emf we must be algebraically adding vad and vbc okay now if we consider vad and vbc the sense of the emf induced in both the ad and bc will be the same okay what does that mean that means in order to calculate the net emf we have to first consider the difference between vad and vbc okay we have to consider we have to add them algebraically okay it's like connecting the negative terminal of uh, a battery to a negative terminal of another battery in series okay so it is analogous to something like this let us say this is vad and then this is going to be vbc okay this is going to be vbc okay so v net will be what 
observe that the denominator of vbc is actually smaller uh, sorry is actually greater than the denominator of vad so vad must be greater than vbc so it has to be vad minus vbc let us now take all the terms that are common in both the expressions so av will be there mu not will be there i will be there and 2 pi will also be there mu not i av upon 2 pi inside the bracket what will we have 1 upon r plus vt minus a by 2 minus 1 upon r plus vt plus a by 2 and now what we need to do is simplify mu not i av upon 2 pi now let's take the lcm so what will happen r plus vt plus a by 2 and then minus this denominator so minus r minus vt plus a by 2 okay r and vt will be negative a by 2 will become positive upon r plus vt minus a by 2 into r plus vt plus a by 2 so that is a minus b a plus b so that will be a square minus b square and what will be the numerator here r r will go vt vt will go so a by 2 plus a by 2 a so that will be a so do we have an option matching this let us see these are the four options okay these are the four options let me zoom them out so that we can pick the right one okay well i guess uh, mu not i a squared b is there in the denominator in, in a, is present in the numerator of all of them mu not i a squared b mu not i a squared b yes okay we don't have 3 anywhere so let us just drop options c and d okay now i have to decide carefully whether it is option a or option b in the denominators we still have r plus vt bracket squared minus a squared by 4 in both of them but the distinguishing point is the number 2 here or 2 pi for option a we have 4 pi here so we don't want that hence the correct option is b okay hence the correct option is b now you might ask why did we not consider the potential difference across cd and across ab i will leave that question to you you can comment your answer in the in the comment section below okay so we have solved the question number 4 let us now go to question number 5 in the next video